What's up, guys? Welcome back to quiz number 21. If you happen to be new here, my name is Nelson, and this is a weekly quiz that I do, giving everybody on YouTube a chance to participate in solving three different chess positions. You fill out your answers in a Google form, and then I analyze the data, and we see what rating ranges chose which moves, and we talk about which ones were correct and which ones were wrong and why. If you didn't make it in this one, that's okay. You can just pause the video as we go through each of these three positions, and the link for the next week's quiz will be in the description below. You can just click on that, and it'll take you right to the Google form. But having said that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, first of all, let's take a look at the rating ranges from zero to 1000. We had 237 people. So I think that's more than last time. So some some new folks in the under 1000 category, uh, 1600, 259 players, and then above 1600, we had 87 players. And now let's jump into the positions. All right, so this is position number one. If you didn't get a chance to participate already, go ahead and pause the video now. Think through what would you play here as white? It is white to play. And once you've got your move, we'll talk about the results. All right, if you had a chance to look at that, in the zero to 1,000 category, we had the top move being queen takes f7, the second move being bishop takes e6, and the third move being rook to f1. From 1,000 to 1,600, top move was again, Queen takes f7, uh, then second move, bishop takes e6, and third move, rook takes e6. And then 1600 and above, top move was queen takes f7, then bishop takes e6, and then rook takes e6 as well. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on in this position. When we first look at it, there's kind of a lot happening. We've got an attack on the queen, but we can't actually take the queen because our pawn is pinned by the rook. There's some tension here between these bishops. It looks like we kind of sort of have something going on with our queen and rook, but not really hard. It's hard to say initially because there's a lot of pieces kind of blocking the path to the king. There's queen takes d4 with check. We have to think about there's this rook, which maybe can come down. So there's a lot happening, right? But the important thing to kind of note is that black's king, really the main defender is this bishop. This bishop on e6 is blocking the rook. It's blocking the bishop. This guy is kind of holding everything together, right? So if we can target that, we're going to be able to to get to black's king relatively easily and that's kind of the idea behind queen takes f7 which was the best move and which most of you guys did see and the main point is the bishop can't move to take the queen because it's pinned by our bishop so it's a free pawn but more importantly it's removing the pawn that's defending this bishop on e6 and now we're going to be able to get to black's king now you did have to pay attention to the fact that if black takes here with check we can just slide our king to the corner and there's no way for black to continue checking us along this diagonal the pawn is obviously stopping the bishop which it's also just pinned and of course the queen can't go there we've got it covered so our king's actually pretty safe tucked away on h1 so that's kind of one thing the other thing is what happens if black just takes our bishop and then it unleashes the queen and the rook and so there's a checkmate in seven moves after this so king c6 knight takes f5 is the the quickest way and really black has no way to stop what you're trying to do so for example, let, let's just say they try to run over here. You're going to bring the rook over with check. King can try to run here, but after queen takes e5, it's checkmate. That's just one example. There's a couple of different ways that that can happen, but the point is black's unable to get away once you get your queen and rook down here. You also have this guy in some lines. If the queen ever tries to move away, this rook can be involved as well. So that was the best move. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out here is you have to be careful when your king is exposed like this that black can't sacrifice and get a perpetual check with the queen. So this is a move that you should have at least considered when you were thinking through this, what's going to happen after this? Because sometimes if your opponent can sacrifice a piece, remove the pawns in front of your king, there could be a perpetual check with the queen. But in this case, what's the best defender against the queen? It's a knight, right? We put the knight right on g2 and black is all out of checks. Even if these rooks weren't here, the queen still wouldn't be able to put us in check because our knight is covering all of these squares, right? So that's the nice thing about defending your king with a knight against the queen. So even that black, you know, couldn't do it. So queen takes f7 was the correct move. Congratulations if you saw that. Now, a couple of the other moves that you guys said, bishop takes e6 and rook takes e6. So rook takes e6 was a very close second, depending on how long you let stockfish run for. It's actually almost equal to queen takes f7. This one's a little bit more involved because after this, you have to see the follow-up, which is sacrificing the bishop next to lure the king, but it's kind of the same idea. Again, you get the king exposed, the rook comes over, and you end up with this queen and, and rook combo, and it's just gonna lead to a checkmate, right? So, and I'll just show you that one. The rook comes down, queen goes here, and you just take it, checkmate, right? So, 
Similar idea, both of those moves extremely strong and good. Now, for those of you who said taking with the bishop, this looks like a more normal move, right? Like, okay, I just trade off the piece that's kind of defending everything. The problem is when black recaptures with the pawn, now you can't take the pawn. You just fix their pawn structure and you actually are running out of threats. And now Stockfish says it's just an equal position, probably going to be a draw and you have to kind of actually start worrying about your king a little bit. So that's kind of the move that you needed to avoid. But both rook takes e6 and queen takes f7 were correct. So just real quick showing you the stockfish evaluation. You can see queen takes f7, rook takes e6, both uh, very good. And then bishop takes e6, like I just mentioned, leads to the draw. All right, let's go to position number two. All right, guys, here's position number two. It's white to play. And again, if you haven't already participated, go ahead and pause the video now and think through what move you would play as white. All right, and if you had a chance to do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So zero to a thousand, we had the top move being knight to d5, second move being b5, and the third move, bishop takes f6. 1,000 to 1,600, the top move was b5. The second move was bishop takes f6, and then the third move was knight to d5. And then above 1,600, the top move was bishop takes f6. Second move was knight to a4, and then the third move was b5. All right, so let's go ahead and talk through what's going on in this position. So first thing that you should have noticed was that this b4 pawn was under attack by black and it's only defended one time. So we kind of had to do something there, which I think most people understood. And that's why we kind of saw the moves that we saw like b5, knight to d5, bishop takes, doing something. Even if we weren't defending the pawn, we were kind of doing something else that distracted black. So let's go ahead and talk. First of all, knight to d5 is actually a big blunder. And the reason it's a blunder is it looks like it's just going to be a trade. Like, okay, black takes me, I take them, and it's just a trade. The problem is when black takes you, they also at the same time unleash this bishop with a discovered attack on your bishop. And this is actually a common idea. You see this in a lot of different types of chess games. Black brings their knight to f6, white pins it, and sorry, Black puts the bishop on e7, right? And this is something you want to keep in mind. When this knight moves, particularly to d5, it creates an attack on your bishop. And this is the kind of important part that a lot of people forget about. It also defends the bishop. So if you try to trade that bishop off, guess what? The knight that just moved is going to be able to capture you and escape from whatever was attacking it. So in this case, Black got a free piece because they took your knight and they took your bishop. And all you got was the bishop. You never really got the knight like you were supposed to because it moved away, okay? So this is a very common idea. I see lots of beginner intermediate players fall for this. So you want to remember this one, okay? So that's why knight to d5 was, was bad. There was no way for you to save your piece. You just lost a piece. Bishop takes f6 was a kind of a middle of the road type of move. Uh, not terrible, but not the best move. And the idea is that, okay, black's probably going to take back. Then we can follow up with knight to d5 and we kind of get this trade and the game goes on, right? But we kind of relieved the pressure on the b4 pawn, which makes sense. And, and I guess that's what some people were thinking. Now, let's go back and talk about this b5 idea. So at first glance, b5 looks like a very strong move because the knight looks like it's kind of pinned, right? And if it goes back to c7 to defend the rook, there's actually a, a move knight a4 and black's in trouble here. Uh, the queen is, is actually getting trapped or almost trapped. And if it goes back here, you've got b6 and it's really bad news for black so if that's what you saw that's good but there's this knight to c5 move and you can't actually take the rook or you just lose your queen so you got to save your queen it allows black to trade the rooks and basically what happens is black frees up their position there's no more pressure on the a file on that rook the knights jumped to a nice square now and it's relatively equal okay so that's kind of the problem with b5 so that brings us to the best move in this position, which was not easy at all to find. And only 20% of the above 1600 rated players found it, knight to a4. And very difficult move to find because the idea is like really weird. But you're playing knight to a4 to gain a tempo on the queen. And you're giving this up intentionally because if black decides to take it, queen takes b4, your plan, wait for it, is to trap the rook in the corner with knight to b6. You don't even worry about your queen. You can, it, black has the option. If they wanna trade queens, they can. It doesn't really change too much. Um, but if they don't, the rook is getting trapped. So for example, the rook just slides over. You can trade if you want here and then bishop to f4, the rook is trapped. You can't save it because you, you can't go back there, right? And then also, 
if we go back, if the rook tries to come up, again, you can trade the queens and then knight to b5, right? And again, rook is trapped, can't go back there. So really interesting idea, very unique position. This is not something that you see all the time. And so I'm not surprised that most people missed this. And then the other thing is what if black didn't take your pawn and they, let's just say, I don't know, moved their queen over here. Again, bishop f4 is a good move, attacking the queen. And I don't really know if there's a place for the queen to go. Because the problem is you, you have to cover this square. Uh, let's see, maybe queen to d8. And then what's the move here? This is actually a line I didn't look at yet. Knight to c6 is what Stockfish is telling me. Yeah, I didn't see this one. What's the idea here? This is crazy stuff. Oh, there's a queen hanging. I didn't... Uh... <laughs> Of course, of course. The queen is hanging. All right. So knight c6 just unleashes the rook. That's why we play there. Right. Anyway, uh, very crazy position. But basically, the point was that you're going to trap the rook and bl black's just unable to really keep it together. If they go queen a7, I assume, yeah, knight to b5. And look at how black's pieces are just getting trapped and, and just kind of falling all over each other. They can't really move. They're not coordinated well. And so... That's why, going back here, knight to a4 was actually the best move for white. And um, yeah, not, not an easy move to find at all. So congratulations for those of you who did find it. And uh, for everyone else, don't feel bad. But just kind of keep those ideas in the back of your mind when you see when you see pieces that don't have a lot of scope, right? Doesn't have a lot of places it can move to. That's when you want to kind of be thinking, hmm, I wonder if I can take advantage of that. And it happens to be perfectly positioned that your bishop and your knight can sort of follow up right and attack those squares so anyway that was position number two and just uh, to show you real quick stockfish you can see knight to a4 big advantage for white bishop takes f6 was the the next best move uh still an advantage for white just not as much and then b5 uh was kind of the the third option there still slightly better for white but not much because like we mentioned after the trade kind of evens out and black sort of gets back in the game all right let's go to position number three all right, this is position number three. If you haven't participated, go ahead and pause and think through what you'd play for white. It's white to play. All right, if you had a chance to do that, let's go ahead and take a look. So zero to a thousand, top move was queen takes b7. Second move was h4. And the third move was queen takes d5. 1,000 to 1,600, top move again was queen takes b7. Second move was rook to g4. And third move was c4. And above 1,600, top move was rook to g4. Second move was c4. And third move was bishop to d2. All right, so first of all, I have to say that uh, this position actually is slightly better for black. And there's not a crushing move, like some crazy sacrifice or anything like that for white to win. It's just not really a great position. So I wanted to see how you guys handled a position like this and see if you could still find the best move even when, when it wasn't kind of an obvious tactic. So first things first, queen takes b7. Although it looks like a free pawn, it's not. It's a big blunder because you're leaving the c3 pawn undefended. And now black hops in with the fork, uh, sorry, with the fork, and you're in big trouble. Something like this, they're they're gonna take this, or they don't even have to. Like queen takes f3, queen h3. Check. I mean, black's just all over you. So, queen takes b7 is not a good move. And you know, even if this fork wasn't available, it's not really the greatest move because you're kind of putting your queen away from the action. Just as an example, like black could play knight a5, even if, like I said, this wasn't here, and they're still doing pretty good getting in a tempo on your queen. The rooks are gonna come over. Your king is not really safe. So you got to be really careful grabbing pawns in a position like this where your king isn't safe that's what i was trying to kind of point out there all right um let's talk about some of the other moves so rook to g4 um quite a few people said that one uh, this is a good move second second stockfish move okay this is a is a nice move sort of getting ready to potentially double your rooks um also blocking the queen from hitting this in some cases, right? Also adding some support over here. If you did want to play c4 in the future, you know, you don't have to worry about that. So uh, I like the idea behind rook g4. I think that's a pretty solid move. Um, bishop to d2 is actually the best move. And I think it's basically, the point is that we need to kind of defend some of these weaknesses, like black's going to be attacking. And since we don't really have anything happening here, like it looks like it's, almost an attack on the king but it's not we can't go here the queen just takes us we can't go here the knight just takes us we just don't really have anything 
And so because of that, it makes sense to bring our bishop back where it can play some defensive, play a defensive role and support our king, right? And the game is relatively equal, still slightly better for black, but that's really what we needed to play. Now, the other move, let's see, somebody said, oh, c4. Yeah, c4, uh, you're just hanging on this fork on, on d4. So there's lots of forks here that we had to be careful of, right? And then did I cover all the moves? Or h4 was the other one. h4, um, I guess the idea is just kind of to support the bishop, but it's already supported. And so this move doesn't really accomplish much for us. I guess you could say it saves the pawn, but realistically, I'm not going to be worried if black takes that anyway, because then I can play rook h1 and have a really, actually a good attack on the king, right? So h4 didn't have too, too much merit. And then the other move, I think somebody said queen takes d5. You know, maybe the idea was to get rid of the knight because you wanted to play bishop f6 and go for some sort of checkmate. Not a bad idea, except it's very easy for black to deal with a threat. They just play g6, shut down your rook, shut down your bishop. And yes, you have this nice looking bishop, but you already sacrificed your queen. You have no way to take advantage of that. And the, the e-file is open on your king, right? So that's the problem with queen takes d5. So pretty tricky position, particularly because it's a it's a bad position for white. You know, it's, it's hard to find good moves in positions where there's there's no winning lines, right? And so hopefully some of you can, can kind of take away. Sometimes the best move is to just play a little bit of defense, right? And try to reorganize your pieces and, and defend some of the threats that your opponent has. So congratulations to everybody who said bishop to d2. Uh, let's just check Stockfish's evaluation real quick. You can see bishop d2 gives black the smallest advantage. And so that's why it's the best move for us. Rook to g4 was also a close second. Queen takes b7, like we talked about, was a big blunder because of the fork here. So anyway, um, hope you guys enjoyed those positions. If you want to participate in next week's quiz, link is in the description below. It takes you right to the Google form. And uh, having said that, I'll see you guys next time. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.